Good afternoon and welcome to the Gear Runner channel. Uh, today we have our very first um, luxury SUV. Um, now I've owned a few BMWs and stuff in the past, but I've never owned a Mercedes. And this is a 2020 Mercedes-Benz GLB 250. Um, we looked at several different SUVs. We looked at Toyota 4Runners. We looked at Lexuses and several Mercedes. And my wife doesn't want anything too large. So she decided to go with the GLB because she said it was like the perfect size for her. And since she'll be driving this mostly, um, this is what we went with. Uh, and I, anybody that watches my channel knows I'm a Toyota guy, but I do have to say this is a very nice SUV. Uh, so let's go over some specs. It does have a 2.0 inline four cylinder turbo, uh, which creates actually 221 horsepower and 258 foot pounds of torque, which actually propels this little SUV pretty well. Now I've not driven this yet and you might say, how'd you get it here? All right, there's a caveat. I did actually drive it about a hundred yards. I've never actually gotten it out of first gear. So we'll be taking this thing for a ride. Uh, maybe in the next video, I'm just kind of introducing the car to the channel right here. And in the next video, I'll take you down the road, take you for a ride and tell you what my thoughts are and first impressions about driving this vehicle. Uh, it does take premium gasoline, which I do put premium gasoline in all my vehicles, no matter what they are from the Civic Si all the way to my Toyota Tundra, I do put premium gasoline in all of those. Uh, it does have a 15.9 gallon tank. It gets amazing 23 mile per gallon in the city and 30 mile per gallon on the highway. Uh, that blows out the 4Runner we were looking at definitely because I think it was like 14 and 17. So even on the highway, it did not get the gas mileage that this Mercedes gets even in the city. Uh, that is one deciding factor I'd say she went with because she went from the 2018 Civic Si to an SUV and you don't expect to keep any kind of good gas mileage. But with 30 miles a gallon on the highway, you're only losing about eight miles per gallon. And from an SUV, that's not too bad. Zero to 60 is 6.9 seconds. So it's actually pretty peppy with that four cylinder turbo engine. It does have 18 inch wheels, a seven and a half by 18 is what is on the front and the rear with a 235-55 R18. And I believe these do have Pirelli Scorpion Zeros. I had Pirellis on my first F-150. Um, I didn't really like the Pirellis. Uh, so we'll see how these actually hold up over time. But I changed my Pirellis on my F-150 pretty quick. Now it does hold five pretty comfortably. And Mercedes kind of did a very quirky thing with this vehicle. They added a third row seat in the back, which we'll look at here in a few minutes. And uh, I believe there's even a sticker that has an age limit on who should be back there. Now I've seen the rear seats in these and uh, or the third row seats in these and you might fit a dog back there. You're not gonna fit any normal size human being in the back. This is a small uh, to medium size SUV and why they put a third row seat in this, I will never know, uh, but uh, they did. So if you have small children, uh, you might use that, but that's about the only thing you're going to use that for. It does have an eight speed dual clutch automatic transmission. And I can't tell you if it shifts smooth, stiff, uh, shifts quick or anything like that, because I've not driven it yet to actually, uh, have the gear shifted. So let's take you to the inside of the vehicle and kind of go over what I know. I don't know a whole lot. I've not really been inside this vehicle. I, um, haven't even rode in this vehicle yet. Uh, there is a couple of quirks that Mercedes did that I guess you could expect out of Mercedes. Uh, we'll go over that as well, but I'll give you a walk around of the vehicle and then we'll go inside and, and kind of look at some of the quirks and features as Doug DeMuro says.
Okay, so now we're inside the Mercedes-Benz GLB 250. I think it's pretty cool how your grill lights up with your headlights and, and daytime running lights. I think it's cool that they add little touches like that in your vehicle. Um, like I said, it just adds a little extra refinement to the vehicle and makes it look a little more classy. You do have like your standard Mercedes-Benz uh, seat adjustment lever over here with all its different positions. I don't know how many different positions it'll do, but it does a ton of different settings. And then you have three different memory seat settings. You have your lock buttons down here, but I do want to tell you there is something about this car that's kind of cool. Um, let me take you outside and show you what that is. So if you lock the door using those buttons right there, nothing happens other than it just locks the door. But if you lock the door using your Mercedes key, it automatically folds in your mirrors. And I think that's pretty cool because you know, a lot of times your mirrors will get hit or dinged or something like that. And then when you unlock your car, or it doesn't matter if you do it with the remote or if you just grab it here because it will auto unlock. Um, so uh, those will fold back out. On the inside, you have all your normal controls on your steering wheel for your radio and your instrument panel up here and call settings and stuff like that. I don't know everything about this vehicle. I want to apologize. Like I said, this is the first time I've actually been in this vehicle other than to drive it down here. There are paddle shifters on this and with a dual clutch transmission, that's pretty cool. I can't wait to try that out uh, to see if those shifts are very crisp and stuff like higher end sports cars are with the dual clutch transmissions. It does have a weird shifter here. Now, I don't know if a lot of Mercedes has this because I've never owned a Mercedes, never really been in a Mercedes or at least a newer one. I've been in several older ones. But you pull this down and it puts it in drive. You push it up. Let me just start the vehicle. Put your foot on the brake, push your start button right here, and then it fires up and you can see the dash. It's telling me my rear hatch is open and I guarantee you that it will not let me put this in gear. It did. So you can see it went into D1, push up, it goes into reverse. There's your selector right there. Push in on this and it puts it the part brake on. So you do also have a panel out here. This is, they told us this was kind of like a, um, iPad or something that you could write on it and it would control a lot of stuff. I've not fiddled with that yet, but it does have that capability. One thing I did notice about this, and like I said, I'll try to learn more about the interior of this and do a full uh, interior instrument panel, how everything works video, but I'm just not familiar with that right now. And I wanted to get this video put up for my subscribers to show you what new vehicle we just got for the channel. Um, the one thing I did notice that was, that was kind of odd is when you hook in your Apple CarPlay, so this does have Apple CarPlay, it takes a USB-C cable, not a normal USB to, you know, your iPhone right here let's see if i can get right there but um it takes a usb c cable so i actually had to go out and purchase a 30 dollar cable to um to be able to actually use apple carplay now you didn't have to have a 30 dollar cable but this kind of matched the car and the interior so i kind of wanted to get something that kind of matched i mean you spend this much on a vehicle you know you kind of want to not cheap out on a cable i guess so I did splurge a little bit on that. It does have a couple of cup holders right here. Um, all your air conditioner controls are right here. There is one thing that is missing on this that my wife did want, and we didn't know it until we got home, but some of these have illuminated uh, climate vents, and then there's an illumination that runs down here, and like an illumination that runs over here, and those things change color. And I think they may even be in the doors. I can't remember, but those things actually change color. You can change them to different colors if you want them to, but this one didn't have it. We looked at one at another dealership that had that, and we assumed that was all standard. So that is not all standard, but it didn't have this. And my wife wanted the panoramic roof, which is pretty cool. And then you push this button again and the shade actually retracts back where it was at 
So that's pretty cool. There is a sunglass holder and it does, or it is big enough to fit a pair of Ray-Ban Wayfarers. Uh, there is a little console right here that you can see. There's a lot of stuff in there. My wife had a lot of stuff on the mirror and stuff like that. And I took it down and crammed it in here so y'all wouldn't have to look at it. There's another USB C port right here. It's like all the ports are USB C. I don't know why that is. Then your glove box is decently sized. And you do have like some storage in the doors where she kept an umbrella and there's nothing over there. And you can see the passenger side door is basically the same as the driver side. You have your heated seats and you have your seat controls, your lock button and your window button, just like the driver's side does as well. The steering wheel is nice and thick. I don't like thin steering wheels. It does have a nice thumb cut out on each side. And the one thing I do not like is I like to drive with my hand in the center of the steering wheel. And a lot of cars nowadays are putting this um, spoke or whatever you want to call it in the steering wheel straight down and you have to stick your hand to the side and I prefer to have it in the middle. I know that's minor problems, but that's one thing that sticks out to me whenever I'm driving on long trips because I have to put my hand over here. My Civic is the same way. My Tundra uh, has the hole in the center, but my Jeep also has a spoke here. So more and more companies are starting to do that. So here's all your headlight controls. It looks like the parking brake. I might have to look at that because, yep, that's what it is. That releases the parking brake. So if I push it, you can see park brake comes up here. If I pull it, the park brake goes away. So it does have an electric park brake. I do also want to say that if you put this thing in drive and then you hit this button on the inside to put it in park, it must also, there a minute ago, it was actually putting on the park brake if you did that, but now it is not. Let's see here, I push that in, all right, then it come on. I was thinking that if I push that button a minute ago, there must be a way that you can set this, and I must have got out of sequence, but you can set it to where when you push the park button on the side, it automatically sets the park brake, and it did it that time, as you've seen right there. So let's take a look in the back, and I'll show you how little room there is in the third row seat. I do want to say, I get, the door's locked. Now listen to this when I open it. Listen to how solid it is. It's like a cook when you open the door. Okay, so excuse the stuff in the floor. Uh, this, is, this is a brand new vehicle, but my wife's been driving it for a few days, so there is some stuff in the floor. She is an RN, so there's face shields and stuff like that. Back here, you do have an actual outlet, which is pretty cool. And then you have more USB C's and a little bit of storage. I don't know what you're gonna keep in that little storage right there. It does also have rear air. If you pull down the center armrest, there are cup holders in the armrest as well. Your headrest right here raise up and down, of course and the seats are really nice leather. I do like these seats, they're pretty comfortable. Uh, let's see how much room I actually have in the back. Now I am six foot three and my knees almost touch the seat at where I drive it. Now, if my wife was driving this vehicle, I would probably have another three to four inches in between my knees, uh, but I do wanna say, Hey, the seats actually recline in this. Oh, that's nice. Let me get out and show you this. This tab right here, you can see he folds the seat down and pulls it back here, but it's gonna be hard to do this one-handed. Okay, so it was too hard to do one-handed, so I had to skip to it. But if you pull this little uh, strap right here, you can see that this seat is actually reclined back um, further than the center section. So you can actually recline these seats back. Cause when I first sat down, I was like, man, this would be horrible on a long trip cause you're sitting straight up and down, but you can actually use these straps right here at the lower end and actually lay that seat back and recline it. I'm not sure how far it goes back. Let's try it and find out. Okay, that was actually as far as it goes back, but that's still way better than it was before. And I'm actually gonna recline that side before I leave. So let's take a look at the very, very back. I did 
put up the third row seat. I want you to look at this. Who's going to fit right there? Who? There's no way I can get back there. I'm not sure anyone can fit back there, but they give them some cup holders. Uh, that's forward thinking. Uh, kind of looks like the robots in Star Wars, the Clone Wars, with their little heads there. That's pretty cool in my opinion, uh, but you're not going to fit anybody there. And I could have swore, yeah, right here, there's a height. Uh, 66 and a half inches is as tall as you can be and get back there. And I'm not even sure you could even be that tall and get back there because that's tiny. So if we go to the back, I do kind of have this pulled out. You can see with the seats up, you have very, very little storage space. Now you pull these right here and the seats go down and or up, and then it gives you a lot more storage space in the back. And of course you can lay these seats down up here if you need even more. Okay, so one last thing we're gonna take a look at before we end this video is the 2.0 four-cylinder turbo engine. I uh, can't believe how dirty this thing is, like they didn't even clean it. I don't, I, I'm shocked. I've never seen a new vehicle that dirty. But um, you can see uh, see the engine here. Uh, sorry it's so dirty. I, I don't know what to say about that. I, I'm, like I said, I'm pretty flabbergasted that there is actually this much dirt in this. And it's not rained or anything here, so literally it's just they didn't clean the engine bay good before we picked it up, which is kind of shocking. But I want to say that um, I think this engine will do pretty well in this little SUV. Uh, German engineering, it's great when it's working. Uh, dread it when it tears up, as most of y'all know. But I wanted to show y'all the engine before we actually uh, ended this video. I don't know how many mods. I don't even think I will mod this engine. I mod a lot of my engines and stuff like that. But I don't think I'm going to do anything to this because, my goodness, I do not want to void any Mercedes warranties or take any chances on them not fixing anything if and when it tears up. Okay, so there it is. Our new 2020 Mercedes-Benz GLB 250. Now, there are a few things that I will do to this, nothing engine-wise. There's a few mods that we're gonna do Cosmetically, there are a few things that my wife wants me to do this and they've actually already came in. So we'll do that video probably next week or the week after. Uh, but like I said, we all know Mercedes-Benz reliability and when something breaks on one of these cars, it is pretty expensive to fix. And I don't wanna take a chance on them looking at something I've done and be like, we're not covering that because you modified it. So everything that I will be doing to this will be cosmetic and any trips that we take for the channel will be done in this because I would assume without driving it, because like I said, the next video will be the driving and first impressions of the drive portion, uh, that it will ride better than anything that we probably own at this time. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer them. Like I said, I'm not a, very familiar with this vehicle, so I did my best to go every, over everything that I could think of. So if you have any more questions, like I said, leave them in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer them. Appreciate y'all watching this video. Please like, share, and subscribe. We'll see you next time.